When you sit down to dinner, you're really not thinking that I'm going to die tomorrow, that this is going to be my last meal. He wakes me up in the middle of the night and he says, Carmen, I have to go to the bathroom and I can't move my legs. In three days, my husband was gone. And by the grace of God, I'm lucky. One of the lucky ones. I'm alive, but I still lost a, a leg. It is, uh, I don't feel responsible for it. Since 1989, more than 700 people have become gravely ill from Vibrio fulnificus, bacteria found in raw oysters from the Gulf of Mexico. Vibrio fulnificus is the deadliest foodborne pathogen that we know of. Once it enters the bloodstream, the infection ravages the body. Victims suffer blistering skin lesions and grossly swollen and discolored limbs that may require multiple surgeries or amputation. Death is swift typically within days. The oyster industry and the nation's food safety regulators know how to prevent this. Treating oysters with low heat pasteurization, high pressure, or quick freezing kills the bacteria. California began requiring treatment in 2003. Deaths in the following years stopped. California in 2003 passed a law or a regulation that uh, said you can't sell raw oysters from the Gulf of Mexico unless they've been processed to kill Vibrio vinificus. The result of that was they went from having about five illnesses a, a year down to zero. And that's an amazing turnaround. This is something, you know, this is a problem we can solve. But the oyster industry and its supporters in Congress have rejected requiring treatment nationwide. They argue that it would devastate the industry. They say those susceptible to the life-threatening infections are a small number of mostly chronically ill people who should know better than to eat raw oysters. Yeah, if you look at the reports of people that's gotten sick or even the, some of the deaths in the past 10 or 15 years, the person probably shouldn't have been eating raw oysters in the first place and they probably knew it. The Sun Sentinel found that Florida's oyster safety system depends on harvesters and dealers to follow rules that are difficult to enforce and leave consumers vulnerable. The penalties for violating those rules are light, if any. Four people died in just six weeks from eating oysters traced to Apalachicola Bay seafood in Florida's Panhandle. Inspectors found that suspicious, but did not fault the company. I don't feel responsible if he ignores the warning on the boxes not to eat them if he's sick. So, now, if he go ahead and, and, and that's like telling somebody, don't you can't swim, don't jump off that bridge up yonder. Healthy people aren't at risk of serious infection, but Vibrio fulnificus quickly becomes life-threatening in some with underlying conditions, such as liver disease, diabetes, cancer, or AIDS. Many people may not even know they're at risk. Consuming two to three drinks a day can cause liver damage years before symptoms develop, and millions of Americans have undiagnosed diabetes. Jose Luis Ruiz said he had seen the warnings on restaurant menus, but didn't know he had a condition that put him in danger. No, I had anything. You know, you see the fine print where it says do not beware of eating raw uh, seafood. But it didn't pertain to me at the time because I felt healthy. I didn't have a clue, you know, that, I, that anything was wrong with me. Most people expect to get sick from eating oysters on occasion. They understand that there's a risk of that. What they don't understand is the seriousness of the risk. You may lose an arm, you may lose a leg, and of course you may lose your life. According to government data, since 1999, an average of one person a month in the United States has died after eating oysters. Raymond Cordes was one of them. A diabetic, he ate an appetizer of three raw oysters while on vacation in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Soon after he returned home to Fort Myers, the 81-year-old retired life insurance executive told his wife he couldn't get out of bed. One of the doctors said to me, your husband is a very sick man. Uh, he may not make it into the 
operating room. And then he told me, and then he told me that they had to amputate his legs and his hand. And I think I was numb from then on. I did expect that if he was gonna go through all that, that at least he'd live. Illnesses are most prevalent from April through October when Vibrio fulnificus flourishes in the warm Gulf waters. Researchers first identified the bacteria in oyster deaths in 1979. It was about that time that the industry began harvesting more oysters year round, not just in the winter. And so the more you harvested oysters in the summer, the more people were exposed. During the 1990s, some concerned oyster processors developed technologies that kills the bacteria. Treated oysters are now served at some casinos, cruise ships, and larger restaurant chains. Red Lobster has served only treated oysters for 15 years. But you won't find them on the menus of many South Florida restaurants because owners say they cost more and don't taste as good. The, the difference would be like saying uh, you have a plastic couch and calling it leather. Uh, and it's really a plastic couch. I mean, if you're going to eat a raw oyster, you want to eat a raw oyster. You don't want to eat a frozen raw oyster. You don't want to eat a pasteurized raw oyster. I mean, you want a raw oyster. Sherman said there haven't been any Vibrio fulnificus illnesses at Southport. Treatment has proven to prevent serious illness and death. In 2009, the FDA tried to use California as a model for the nation by requiring all raw Gulf oysters to be treated in the warm months. And the industry immediately went to their members of Congress, and they went to their state legislatures, and they got political forces behind them, and FDA was called carpet by members of Congress, powerful members of Congress. In three weeks, Florida Senator Bill Nelson and Gulf Coast congressmen introduced bills to stop the FDA. And what we seek here is an understanding um, of the power and significance of this industry. 3,500 people um, directly uh, employed, uh, hundreds if not thousands of restaurants, small business suppliers, operators uh, engaged in this industry. And a rule like this, if it would uh, go into effect as suggested or proposed, could have a devastating effect. In a 2010 presentation to a seafood trade group, an insider explained how the industry galvanized congressmen against the FDA. Um, we established a, a huge press blitz, a lot of websites, petitions, got a lot of publicity. Um, we sent them a pretty clear message. They backed down. Many of the claims by lawmakers were exaggerated. They said the regulation amounted to a ban on raw Gulf oysters. It wouldn't have. They said the problem could be better solved by educating at-risk consumers. But education had already proven ineffective. They said it could put thousands out of work and triple the cost of oysters. A study for the FDA later showed the effect on jobs and oyster prices were overstated. But it worked. The industry not only defeated the FDA, it got a law passed requiring congressional approval if the agency ever tried to require treatment again. Kimberly Bliss blames congressmen and their industry for her mother's death. Somebody somewhere decided it was too cost prohibitive or it would affect their bottom dollar. It wasn't worth the, the money it was going to take to prevent this from killing people. They're responsible for their deaths. They have blood on their hands. Her mother, Virginia Barano of North Florida, died last year after a lunch of raw oysters with her husband. She's one of at least 115 people in the U.S. who became seriously ill, lost limbs, or died after Congress and the industry defeated the FDA. Wait till it's your mother. Wait till it's your sister or your brother that simply goes out to happy hour, eats some oysters, and is dead in six days. Then, then they might open their eyes and care. Cordes, the Fort Myers widow, said losing her husband so unexpectedly was shocking enough. But learning that his death was preventable is infuriating. 
You're not dealing with objects, you're dealing with people's lives. I understand there is a treatment and they had an opportunity to use it. Instead of, instead of lobbying or doing whatever it is that they're doing to, to prevent it because they're worried about their industry, how about worrying about the people? Ruiz, now 54, lives with constant pain. The stump of his left leg, cut eight inches below his hip, twitches and pulsates so much it sometimes jolts him from his sleep. He uses a motorized scooter and crutches. A prosthetic leg is too painful to wear. I have pain every day, 24-7. I feel like my leg's there, and I feel like it's uh, somebody sliced my foot and I have the skin's hanging. I feel like I have barbed wire uh, around my ankle, around my calf, that, that it's not there, and then pain in my knee. Following his amputation, Ruiz could no longer run his business making custom stone and brickwork. The business went down. I mean, I, I couldn't do it with one leg anymore. Yeah, I lost everything a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm alive. I thank God for that. But, you know, it's really changed our lives. <laughs> A bank foreclosed on Ruiz's house. He and his wife, Lourdes, now live on disability in a two-bedroom apartment near Chattanooga, Tennessee. Lourdes Ruiz used to enjoy going out dancing with her husband. Now, she just tries to spread the word. There's a lot of stairs, and um, we like to tell people, you know, um, you know what happened to my husband? He lost his leg and almost his life uh, for eating raw oysters. And they're surprised. They're shocked. Are you serious? They don't understand. They don't know. People don't know. 